All right, uh, let's see. So what's going on? We have, um, like somebody just mentioned in chat, we have Animesh out on all the RC channels. So that is still uh, still going well. We haven't run into any uh, issues on the server side so far. Um, there's not an RC viewer. We're still working on some um, some bugs on the viewer side. So I think uh, I think it's still going to be a bit more fiddling to get to an RC viewer, but uh, we're continuing to work on it. Uh, let's see. Yeah, Avastar has been updated help with Animesh bugs. Um, yeah, that is that should be a big help. The um, the change there is that the um, the orientation is going to be X forward by default, so that uh, it's it's not as easy to get into the situation where the uh, bind shape matrix is doing something squirrely that isn't being accounted for properly. Um, I'll, I'll talk more about orientation issues later because I know it's a topic of perennial fascination um, or at least something we can't escape. So. Um, but let me, let me run down the kind of overall situation first. Um, let's see. Uh, meetings, we will be off for a couple of weeks. Um, uh, next week I'll be out on vacation. The week after that we have an all-hands company meeting that can with it, so uh, we'll be we'll be back on the whatever that is the nineteenth of July. Uh, let's see what else. Uh, Animesh issues. I got a got a ping from somebody about the Z offset issue. This is something where if you um, if you set a, a vertical offset to your mesh at the time of upload, um, that was getting respected by avatars but not by animeshes and that should be fixed now so if anybody's been having issues with that um let me know if, if it's not working for you uh we're thinking that that is uh, behaving correctly now uh let's see other projects uh bakes on mesh um has just been submitted to qa uh uh, Anchor has a bunch of bug fixes in the pipeline, uh, including getting the uh, local updates to work correctly. So when you're editing your appearance, uh, you should see the right things. Even baked. Uh, so that's in QA now, and uh, if that all passes, then there will be enough project for your distant future. And let's see. Writer around. Writer, writer, no writer. Hey, Oz. Uh, writer says that uh, we're getting close to a project viewer for EEP, so that'll be that'll be big news. Looking forward to uh, take a look at. Um, posted on that one. Um, let's see. I think that's it for general updates. Um, Oz, anything you want to uh, chat about this week? No, not really. Just came to hang out because I hadn't been here in a while. Uh, yeah, EEP, EEP uh, viewer should be close to uh, coming out. We should be having a, a EEP project viewer fairly soon. Yeah, it should be usable on a DD in the next week or two, um, and on that is on all of a DD, um, and then uh, another week or two after that, probably for Agni, assuming things go go well. Yeah, yeah. The the Eep stuff is um, you know, requires simulator changes as well, so it's only going to work in certain regions initially kind of similar to, uh, to Animesh in that respect. Uh, question about Bakes on Mesh headed for a project viewer. Does that mean you're not adding anything else to it? No, it doesn't. It's, uh, Bakes on Mesh is already a project viewer, so it's it's just going to be a, an updated project viewer with fixes for some of the bugs that aren't fixed now. 
Um, the, it's, that's not saying anything definite about what the uh, final state of it's going to look like. Uh, let's see. Uh, LSL support for Bakes on Mesh. Yeah, nothing new there. The, the last batch of work has been basically bug fixes, um, just getting UI to work correctly and display correctly and so on, not, uh, not features. Uh, let's see, what else? Um, question on whether LODs for Warren Animesh will be tinkered with. Uh, very likely, yeah. I have a, a whole bunch of LOD-related things that uh, I want to look at now that we have, um, you know, an accurate bounding box available. Mesh, mesh rigged avatars and meshes. Um, you know, right now we have we have decent data about the bounding box extents, which means that we, we can do better calculations, but that doesn't mean that that's the data we're currently using for all our calculations. So it, it needs to be kind of reviewed case by case to see, um, see what's left to do there. Uh, let's see, is it possible to test eat parcel wind light on the beta grid without EM rights? Uh, sorry, what are EM rights? The state manager. Um, okay. I think what we have to do to test anything that involves land ownership on a DD is that we have to manually assign ownership of parcels. Um, ordinary land purchasing doesn't work right on a DD. Um, well, that's something we should probably think about trying to fix, but that's out. We don't want to burden the project with that. So when we get to that point, um, we'll probably be able to create a, a, a set of parcels that we can, that we can hand out. The, the parcel wind light does not require the state manager rights. It just requires parcel ownership. Uh, there was the, a comment about the bounding box of attached animeshes. Um, that's that's correct. The math for that wasn't being done correctly, and I've got what I think is a fix for that um, in the pipeline now. So I think the next time the project viewer updates, you should see the the fixes for that. Yeah, I, I wouldn't be surprised if the issues you mentioned in that bug are related to the to the bounding box getting calculated incorrectly. That that actually can cause all kind of weird behaviors. Um, you know, the the threshold at which the LOD changes can be wrong, um, and you can also wind up with like the wrong extents if it tries to render as an imposter and, and you know various bad things. Um, but uh, there there should be a, a fix for that on the way. Well, I, I would say the end is in sight for the projects, but I wouldn't say that they're so close to uh, done that we're, you know, desperately casting about for things to do. Um, don't don't really have any comments on, on what's coming next at this point, but, uh, yeah, looking forward to getting a chance to 
think about that once we get a few more uh, issues wrapped up. Which, which one was something Ryder said he was working on for the future? Yeah, I thought there was work in progress on God Rays in, in one of the repos. Oz, do you know what the story is on that? It's it's in there. It's in EEP? Yeah. It, <laughs> cool. Uh, in fact, I think I saw a commit go in just the other day that um, actually implemented the first version. And they're called crepuscular rays. We use the secular name. Is that like separation of shaders and state or something? Yeah, exactly. So what will Bakes on Mesh and Animesh mean for somewhat normal Second Life players? I like that term. Um, well, we really don't know yet. I mean, it's it's a new technology, or, or you know, two new technologies that we're uh, that we're in the process of, of uh, implementing and getting the the bugs out of. Once it's out in the wild, um, is really when we find out what people are going to do with it. Um, you know, we we often have our own theories about how things are going to get used, but um, we're we're always amazed at the uh, ingenuity of of our, uh, our users once they actually get a hold of things, and they they always come up with things that we never anticipated. Right. I think uh, it just depends on people's creativity, um, you know, particularly with with Bakes on Mesh, where there's a large existing. Um, there's a large existing content base out there already for, uh, you know, ways of, of creating and managing mesh avatars and applier systems and so on. Um, and, you know, even for, for Bakes on Mesh itself, it's not it's not definitely decided exactly what the final feature set is going to be. We have various requests that are still under consideration. So, you know, once, once you get the final feature set and then the, uh, you know, the people who have been doing content, uh, you know, using other, other techniques for, for many years, um, start picking it up and, and seeing how they want to use it. Then I think, I think you're going to see, um, I think you're going to see the emergence of, of various kind of standards for, uh, you know, managing avatars that are uh, that are mesh avatars that are are baked based or, or partly baked based, and um, it, it'll be interesting to see how that shakes out. But uh, I certainly wouldn't venture to predict exactly what's going to happen at this point. Uh, there was a question that went by about how the corpuscular rays are implemented. They're actually implemented as an atmospheric effect. So you're you're basically describing how much scattering there is in the air because that's what produces that effect. So it's not a it's not a separate object the way people do do them now. Instead, it will just be an effect created by the light as it moves through the air.
which means it will always point in the right direction. And in fact, we have uh, new versions. Uh, we have the uh, new LSL functions that will become available with EEP that will point correctly towards, that will give you the, the direction to point or correctly towards the sun and the moon as they are represented in uh, by wind light, which currently the, the current LSL functions for finding the time of day that people use for that don't do that. They're, they're not wind light sensitive, but now they will be. Right, same as shadows. So you will be able to make working sundials. In fact, we have working sundials. Portable Stonehenge you can wear on your wrist. Uh, I don't... I, I don't know how walls will interact with, with that effect. It's a good question, but I don't, I don't know the answer. No precipitation. I don't think we'll be modifying anything at this point uh, as part of this project about how light and walls interact. Uh, unless Graham is getting trickier than I am aware of. Yeah, that's always a challenge to try to change the behavior of anything that's already out there. Usually can't do it. Question about three new data points for LL particle system parameters. I'm, Oz, I'm pretty sure we've discussed this before, um, probably when you were around. That that one's accepted and just looking for a, a home, isn't it? Uh, sorry, which? What was the question? Uh, this is a question about bug 214757 linked above, which is the uh, extending, adding new parameters for particle systems. Uh, yeah, we, we imported that one. We haven't done anything on it yet. Unfortunately, the supply of good ideas exceeds the supply of uh, development hours. Yeah, I, uh, that's that's one I would have liked to have had. So, I, I'm, yeah, <laughs> that's uh, that's some. The hardest part of that one is the is the viewer side because that's where the particle stuff actually happens. Um, so. 
Um, if you're interested in accelerating that one, Tyrell, then uh, find a third-party viewer dev who will do the will dummy up the support in the viewer, and then we'll be able to do the server side relatively easily. Well, that's a good point. We're always happy to look at uh, open source contributions. Meshes show info the same way as avatars do when animation info is turned on, uh, but seems to show different info than LL get object animations. Um, what uh, what difference are you seeing on those? Uh, that, it could be a bug, or it could just be that the animation info text doesn't get updated super frequently. Um, I think sometimes you have to, you know, zoom in or out or do something else to, to trigger an update to the debug text. So it may just be it's lagging the state, um, or there, there could be some other issue. But if, if you want to, um, post a Jira on that, we'd be happy to take a look at it. At least theoretically, I would expect those two to be consistent. Great, thanks. Length of an animation in seconds. Yeah, that's what was that? that um, sorry, go ahead. Somebody else was talking. No, I'm just replying to what Veer said. What the heck is he talking about? Or, or Oz, I mean. What Oz said. Uh, yeah, it's it's uh, it's basically a, an in-world animation editor. So you can the first version will just be useful for creating poses, but uh, eventually we we hope to extend it into creating full animation sequences. Yeah, if you can create a bunch of poses and string them together. Wouldn't stringing a bunch of poses all together instead of making one animation be a bit resource intensive? Uh, it, well, the idea would be that the output would be an animation. Um, you know, you, you okay. work with the with the poser and then ultimately generate a uh, an animation that can be uploaded. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Oh, about it. Yeah, about animation length. Um, there, there's a limit. There's a bit of a limitation 
um, on the server side in that currently the simulator doesn't doesn't really know anything about animations. It doesn't ever, uh, as far as I know, it doesn't ever actually, you know, read the contents of animations or parse the contents to figure out, you know, joints they affect or, or how long they are or any of that stuff. Um, so, you know, it's not that that couldn't be done, but it would be a, uh, you, you know, it'd be a decent sized chunk of work. It might have performance implications on the back end. Um, so, you know, that's the sort of thing that if we had some, you know, compelling reason to do that, then a bunch of other things would become easy, like, you know, or do, like adding an LSL function to get. But uh, until we added that kind of capability, kind of a lift there, a decent amount of work to get to the point where. You know, right now we do some we do some analysis of animations at upload time. Um, so there's there's some code that uh, you know looks at things when they're first uploaded. But you know when you're just when you're just requesting animations and saying you know hey run this particular thing, um, the simulator doesn't really know anything about the animation other than just its um, its inventory ID or its uh, its asset ID. Just passes that along to the viewer. So, I mean, the bottom line is we probably wouldn't, you know, go to the work of adding animation parsing to the simulator, you know, just to support this LSL function, but if if there was some, uh, you know, kind of high importance, high profile thing where we needed to do it anyway, then it would be kind of easy for this to ride along with, with that work. Yeah, if there was a big animation overhaul going on for some other reason, for example. Changing the priority, yeah, that one also sounds good. And speed. Uh, Vera, I was just talking to Gaia because I had a problem because the Second Life viewer is denying babies their pacifiers and bottles. <laughs> oh, no. Okay. Purposely, too. It's Crying not... babies everywhere. This is terrible. I mean, what's the right. problem? <laughs> but uh, it seems like uh, Gaia told me I have to use the Firestorm viewer to upload... Uh, an attachment that's rigged to attachment or a mesh that's rigged to attachment point. Uh, that's not that shouldn't be a limitation today. Um, I mean, there were a couple of different issues. At one point, we didn't support reading to attachment points at all, and then there was a period where you could do it, but it wouldn't know what to do with ones that had spaces in the names. Um, I, I think the only thing you would have to do to get it to work now is just to make sure that your joint names have like an underscore instead of a space. Well, well essentially, Gaia told me that I have to use the Firestone ver Viewer because something didn't get parsed over to the Second Life Viewer. 
Yeah, that probably that's about the underscore versus space thing. But yeah, we no we as far as I know we've fixed that in, in the Animesh viewer. Um, if if you have a, an animation that you know that won't upload. Um, oh, not, in, not, the not, not Animesh viewer. in the Animesh viewer, I did not try it in the Animesh viewer. Okay. I, yeah, I don't remember. It might have been a fix we did back in the Bento days, actually. But in any case, yeah, try it with Animesh. If that doesn't work, then. Um, you know, drop me a line. I'm sure we can get it work. Because, you know, babies need pacifiers. An unpacified baby is a scary thing. Okay, Beck says the fix is... Probably already in uh, in Animesh. Yeah, I, yeah, I thought something was up because uh, we have a, our cat uses the same thing for its catnip, so and that seems to work. But I didn't know. Yeah, I must have not been using an Animesh here. Yeah, so we're not uh we're definitely not trying to stop people from from rigging to attachments although uh of course in the bento days the hope was that if we've got all of those joints newly added we don't have to rig to attachment points um you know my my personal feeling is that rigging to attachment points isn't ideal because um you know it makes it hard to use the attachment points as an attachment point but um I guess if Animesh objects don't support attachments anyway, then uh, maybe it's not so much of an issue. Well, I, I completely agree with you, uh, but in these particular cases, it's just way more handier to use the attachment point, and, you know, I always know where it's going to be. Yeah. Okay. Well, yeah, it, it should definitely be possible to do that, so uh, yeah, give it a shot and let me know. Uh, let's see. Probably say I want to talk about rotation nonsense. Um, yeah. So I got uh, I got the um, patch from you guys, um, and had to tweak the logic just a little bit to get it to work for arbitrary um, meshes. But um, if if you put that in, it does seem to you know cause the rotation for the avatar to line up correctly um, with the orientation of the, you know, like the physics shape of, of the corresponding mesh object if, uh, you know, if a mesh object is the root of the, of the link set and you know, if your other rig meshes are, are also consistent with that. Of course, it's only correction, so just get whatever's in the root. Um, so, you know, that's, there's still a question of what the correct behavior actually is. The, the problem with, with doing that is that it means that, um, you know, if, if you have a, a rigged mesh as the root, then, you know, the object you create is going to be oriented that way. So it's, it, you know, like if you say that I, I made a bunch of Animesh uh, you know, I had a bunch of meshes that had been uploaded from different um, from different viewers, right? So there, there's there's one from Blender that's face, facing in the minus y direction, and there's there's one that's using it's used the latest version of Avastar that's facing in the plus x direction. There's one that's using you know something else that's facing some way. So if I resed you know all of those meshes um, at the same time, they would be facing in different directions, right? If I tried to run a script that to get them to walk forward and and you know turn 90 degrees and walk forward again, then some of them would walk forward and some of them would walk sideways, right? It wouldn't be consistent because they don't have a common frame of reference for which way they they want to be oriented. Um, you know, my my concern is that it seems like maybe we actually want there to be a consistent frame of reference that it makes more sense to say. You know, avatars are avatars are plus X oriented, and um, 
you know, ideally stuff gets created in that format, but if not, it kind of gets, uh, you know, listed around that way on, uh, on animation. So that, that gives you more consistent behavior with something like scripts, but on the other hand, it doesn't, it doesn't address the concern about, you know, the physics shapes being out, out of whack, which is, which is not a great look. So, um, you know, it's, it's still, it's still a little, um, I, I'm, I'm just, I'm talking right now, so I'm not keeping track of what's going on in, in chat. I see there's a bunch of stuff rolling by. Um, so, you know, that's, that's kind of the concern. I think that, you know, the, the fix makes a certain kind of sense, but I'm not positive that we, that it's what we want to do. And, you know, if you do have a root object that's not a mesh, then, you know, that's another, that's another can of worms too, right? In that case, there isn't a bind shape uh, in the root to, to orient to, in which case, you know, you still wind up with the same kinds of same kinds of alignment issues, but you wind up with consistent orientation at, you know, kind of at scripting time. Um, so no definite decision on that yet, but I do appreciate the submission, and I have done some testing on it. I think, uh, you know, I think it can be made to, to, to work as advertised with, a, you know, minor tweaks. Uh, okay, scrolling back. You know, how things are today, pre mesh. Um, yeah, I mean, the, the orientation issue for meshes has kind of always been hiding uh, away in a sense, but it wasn't very visible because, you know, the rig meshes were only displayed on existing avatars and they were, they were only ever non-physical. So, you know, if the physics was in the wrong place, you really couldn't tell. Um, and if the orientation was inconsistent with the way it showed on the avatar, then it didn't really matter because you never displayed it by itself anyway. Actually, I was um, working with Gaia last week about that problem, uh, the physics shapes being uh, turned 90 degrees. Um, that turns out to be a blender issue, not a Maya. Maya uh, DAEs have no problem. Um, but DAEs created from Avastar do have that problem. And um, so Guy is working on it right now to hopefully fix it in Avastar moving forward. But Aki had a great, because Aki was, uh, also was also, um, um, uh, you know, we were working, all three of us were working on it together. And Aki had a great idea of adding um, in the edit window that you could click on, say, an animesh and have an option of, a little box that you can click because to turn the, the animesh 90 degrees facing X um, uh, to fix uh, old DAEs that were uploaded previously. Um, um, and because uh, they they're all rotated the exact same way. 90 yeah. degrees so, I think so is that's... In, in Z. Uh, so you mentioned that there's a fix. What, what, what level is that getting applied at? Is that during upload or like when you're editing the object after it's uh, after it's already rest oh it would be after um, after it's um, uh, when you res it you know you right mouse click on it and you click edit and then you go into like probably like a features the features mm. tab that it would be where you if this is an animesh you have a little check mark to turn it 90 degrees in the negative 90 degrees I believe it is in the Z axis um, that would be for anything that was uploaded before Gaia fixes it, fixes it. Um, uh, so it's definitely a Blender or Avastar issue. Maya does not have this problem. Okay, well, that's good to know. Uh, let's see. Beck has some comments about LL look at um, on pathfinding. Uh, documents the correct approach. Okay, I'll take a look at that. Uh, 
Uh, editing feature to change object orientation would be nice. Um, yeah, I mean, there's there's a whole can of worms associated with this. If you know, if you think about like the arbitrary case where you've got a bunch of different rigged meshes that were created with in different coordinate frames, and you know, you link them together, they'll they'll kind of all look right on on your um, on your animesh skeleton. But yet they they could have you know strewn physics shapes you know halfway across the landscape and and their their sort of static locations could be nowhere near each other. Um, you know obviously that's not good bottling practice. You you wouldn't normally want to do it that way. But um, you know you, you you could argue that we should be doing something about that kind of case too. In which case it seems like you would. You know, at least for some of those objects, you would have to be making them line up to the skeleton rather than making the skeleton line up to them, because I mean, there's only the skeleton and such a different print, basically different rigged meshes that are all kind of cooperating together. Can I respond to what Elizabeth is saying? Oh, sure. Okay. And what Elizabeth is saying is she's saying that it depends in any program that can export out a DAE if the skeleton is facing not X and and the you know it exports out would have this issue. So yeah, I agree with what she's saying that because of Avastar, the way the skeleton is set up is it's not facing the same way as it does in Second Life. So when it's getting exported out, that's what's causing the issue. So it's not a Blender issue per se. It's how Avastar is set up. Now, I don't know if Blender has the capability of setting up the skeleton to export out properly. I don't know Blender that well. Um, but we still would need a legacy fix for older DAEs that were uploaded previous to whatever... Um, Gaia can do in Blender to correct, get the correct skeleton orientation. So I understand what Elizabeth is saying, but what I was saying is not necessarily incorrect. This is a Blender DAE problem issue from Avastar uh, and that Maya if, does not have this problem if the skeleton is set up correctly, which is Z is up, uh, X is forward, and Y is left and right. Um, so, well, I'll just say that uh, Blender, uh, when you export, whether it's FBX or almost any format, uh, you can change the complete orientation of uh, the rig or the mesh. Uh, what uh, Gaia and Avastar is doing is they're kind of doing everything for us, and it works. Uh, but obviously, I, I don't know exactly what the issue is uh, with the rotation, but um, they're doing it for us. But Blender does have those options. Yeah, I mean, Beck is right. This is an issue with the way that the, the bind shape matrix gets handled. Uh, or not handled in the viewer. Excuse me. But, uh, you know, given that we've historically had this limitation, the question is, you know, what's what's the right thing to do moving forward? Um, I think if, if future if future content, uh, you know, is 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 normally set up in a in a plus X direction, so that the you know need to use the bind shape, then that's that's great. But there's still a lot of stuff out there that's that's kind of doing its thing in a different way and we have to decide what the you know right way to approach that is. Um, another thing that we've we've talked about um, recently is that uh, you know it, I think part of this is a is an uploader issue. You know the mesh uploader is um, you know it has some issues and and one thing it, it doesn't do is to help you you know, know when you're uploading something that, that has these kinds of orientation issues. Um, so, you know, at the very least, we should be giving people feedback about it and saying, hey, it's something to be aware of. And in a, in a more perfect world, we would actually give them the option to fix it at upload time as well. 
you can actually see the problem in the upload in the preview window. You know where you can sit, you can select the um, the physics shape or um, you know skin weights. If you pop back and forth between those two, you can actually see the avatar turn 90 degrees. If there's a problem, if there's no problem, the the in the, pre the preview window, the the mesh will stay facing the the correct way. So you can actually see if there's an issue. Oh, that's a good point. So we had a comment about the limit of a single worn animesh. Um, let's see, people can still pile linked animeshes into one attachment. Uh, they can, but it's it's really different behaviors. If if you have um, if you have a bunch of different rigged meshes that are all part of the same animesh attachment, then they're all going to share a single skeleton, right? They're all gonna they're all gonna animate together, and they're all gonna have a common. Uh, common, you know, shape in the sense that if, if the meshes, you know, cause any, you know, turn turn your avatar into a, a you know, into a dog shape or something, then, or, or turn the animesh avatar into a dog shape or something, then um, basically all of those meshes are going to be shaped like a dog. Um, so, uh, you know, people can can't do that, but if, if the effect they're shooting for is they have multiple independent skeletons, then, uh, you know, at least for now, that would, because you've got the single skeleton limit. Um, you know, we will, we will continue to assess limits. We've, we've always tried to, you know, raise things when we thought we could afford it, but um, I think at least for the initial release, we'll, uh, we'll be going with the one, one animesh attachment and see how things shake out. Uh, also, I, I'm always curious to hear about use cases. What what do people, uh, you know, envision doing with multiple animesh attachments, and and what limit would they need to make that work? Do you really want to know? Yeah, feel free to clean it up for me if you like. But uh, you know, just uh, you know, in particular, you know, how how many do they think they need? If it's say, you know. A one is not enough. If I hear that people need three, that's more specific than hearing that one is not enough, whatever the number is. Well, of course, Zubies want you to be able to wear two babies. Um, but... Personally, I'm weary about giving people more than one. How many babies is too many babies? This is not a question we've had to address before. So and and yeah, why why is there a limit at all? It's a performance thing, you know. Having um, having attachments that have their own skeletons is is more expensive than you know having attachments that don't have their own skeletons. Other things being equal, and uh, also because attachments don't have uh, you know don't have a land impact associated with them, there there isn't sort of that additional mechanism to you know, discourage a lot of complexity. So, you know, I'm, I'm confident that if we if we set the limit to be, uh, you know, 50, there would be somebody who would have, you know, five little dancing skeletons on each finger. Um, and, you know, so I'm, I'm pretty sure there has to be a limit, whether the, whether the limit ultimately should be one. Um, harder to say. As I say, we will... We will continue to assess that. Uh, 
Yeah. Well, I mean, you couldn't really have ten different animeshes that use the use all those bones. You 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 know you would um, you would have to make a single animesh. That, that is, you'd have to link together all of the uh, you know all of the rig meshes into one animesh object before you could set it as an attachment. Um, so I mean, that would be subject to the usual limits of of animeshes in terms of uh, uh, you know triangle counts and that sort of thing, but um, you know, would work as long as, as long as you're happy with the behavior that the share a common skeleton. And, and you can only use 110 bones, uh, not 150. Oh uh, well, it's. I mean, it's. I think it's 110 per mesh, right? So you actually could. Uh, you know, you could link together multiple rigged meshes that used um, that use different bones and and the. You know the combined combined critter could use, you know, 159 or whatever, as long as no single mesh used more than 110. My point is really I don't see what the limit saves us from. People who want to abuse it and cause grief are going to abuse it and cause grief. A single attachment limit, to me, is just ridiculous. It's a limitation that is uh, certainly disappointing to anyone that plans to use animesh attachments for more than just carrying a baby around or having their puppy follow them or for her driving around on a motorcycle. Those three examples are the only ones that are well suited to a single animesh attachment limit. Uh, please give us more examples of something that would be great with multiple. Okay, as somebody else mentioned, being able to create an animesh male genitalia would be a nice bonus. But if anybody wants to be able to use any other application of animesh, then that's out. I'd like to be able to make uh, other animesh attachments. So it, it, the truth of the matter is, is that while it seems that most of you feel we're well served by what's available on the bento skeleton, I get requests for the last, well, 10 years now for stuff that people would like to see regular attachments do, like wings. And the bones that are in the wings will not do the kinds of things that people have been asking for for 10 years. So I'd like to be able to create my own wing mesh rig and create animesh wings. But again, if they want to be able to wear the rings and carry their baby around, they can't because a single animesh attachment limit is ridiculous. Okay. Um so I'm I'm curious about the uh you know having sort of body parts uh uh you know wings or genitalia or whatever um you know why do those need to be animeshes as opposed to using um you know the the skeleton of the uh of the original avatar what what issues do you run into there Well, uh, let's just use wings as an example. Bento wings are nice, and it's great that we have bones for those now, but there are not sufficient bones in the bento wings to be able to do a lot of the kinds of emotes that people have requested. A uh, simple wing hug is one. It's very difficult to use the limited bones that are available for the wings to do a convincing wing hug. Uh, that's just one example. Personally, I'd like to be able to take my Osiris male genitalia and make it animesh. A single bento bone. First of all, it's completely useless for that. And second of all, you also can't uh, really change states that way. All you can do is change the angle on something. Uh, I mean, I, I know people have done, um, you know, modifications to the to the rig. It's it's more work, but if you uh, you know, if you're if you're willing to to munge around on the on the various bones in the skeleton, you can you can repurpose right. existing joints. You so. can, you certainly can, but you can't. Uh, what am I trying to say here? The, the, the bento isn't going to work for all of the applications, especially not if somebody is trying to use, um, you know, two different types of creations that borrow bones from two different creators. You could wind up with all kinds of headaches there. 
Uh, but more to the point, um, you know, I don't get this single animesh limit because it's not really saving us anything. I mean, well, in, let, in let me another bento skeleton to work with, so I can read me... however I want, and that's great. But you know, then you're going to limit it to one attachment per avatar, so that means that the end user winds up having to pick the single animesh attachments that they want to wear. And they can't wear any other one at the same time. They couldn't even, for example, uh, you know, ride around in their vehicle with their pet if they're both animesh. Let, let me let me just uh, provide some perspective on on why we're rolling this out with that limit in place. Um, and it's basically two rules that we have found are really important. The first one um, I have come to call Simon's rule because he quotes it a lot, uh, which is everything should have a limit. We have we have long since found that anything we put into Second Life, any feature of Second Life that we implement that does not have a limit, somebody finds a way to abuse it uh, such that it damages the experience of everyone else. Um, so everything has to have a limit. I have no argument the second, with that. I just the, think the, the limit second, of one is too little. Right. The second rule is it's much easier to raise limits than it is to lower them. We have successfully lowered some limits that were problems before, but we always end up damaging something if we do that. And that's a scary oh, thing that we try to avoid. So I am completely on board with the idea of launching with only one limit if it is, there's going to be serious consideration to raising it later. The problem that I'm having right here in this moment that's really aggravating me is there are people in the community sitting right here in these chairs that are saying that what I'm asking for is ridiculous. And to me, that is because they just don't care about the applications that I'm talking about. Just like they don't care if, on, if uh, Bakes on Mesh launches without applier support, because they don't understand the impact that it's going to have on the applier market. There is a very narrow-minded tunnel vision view here that I am getting very frustrated with seeing repeated. I get it if you don't care about this or you don't care about that. I just don't think that it benefits any of us to come in here and limit beyond reason the potential imagination of the Second Life creator and user. Now, as far as right now, for sure, I agree. That's fine, Tier, and that's fine, Elizabeth. But some of you people pop off with, like, you know, there's limits for a reason, and, you know, why would you want to do that and do that a different way instead? And, you know, that I didn't come here prepared to have a full-fledged debate on whether or not there should ever be uh, multiple animesh attachments. Uh, or, trust me, I can cite probably a 100 different examples of stuff that my customers have requested over the last decade. All I'm saying, and the only reason I keep bringing it up, is I want to make sure that the Lindens are aware that at least within my market, there is an interest in seeing more than one animesh attachment able to be worn in the long term. And yeah, now so up. we're we're definitely aware of that. And, and you know, we do take the, the fact that there are different use cases seriously. We don't assume that, that everyone is trying to use the features in the same way. Um, so yeah, the, I think our our interest is in is in going slowly enough that we don't create a problem. We'll then have to try and walk back, and uh, it, you know we're always looking for ways. I mean, the history of of this user group is uh, is a history of our finding ways to extend and add to what was what was not there before, um, and. We're going to try to keep doing that, but we just want to make sure that we don't go faster than uh, our technology and our ability to to manage it um, is is capable of. That's cool, and I appreciate what's being done now. I'm actually very excited about all of the stuff that you guys are bringing to Second Life that's new. What I'm not excited about is seeing Elizabeth go, that's ridiculous, and comparing it to people in a four million triangle it meshes. It's not the same thing at all, and that argument is completely useless. We should, uh, we should probably wrap it up for today. We're a little past time. Um, so, uh, back at uh, PolySale, I know we, we didn't resolve all the questions about orientation and positioning um, 
and you know we we are actively looking into it and i think we'll probably be having some continuing discussions on this through other channels um since we're not going to have meetings for the next couple of weeks um but uh uh anyway we'll uh you know we'll continue to look into that and uh see what seems to make sense um but uh yeah anyway looking uh Looking forward to seeing what uh, people can do with this once we can get it out onto the full grid and, and into release, and uh, we'll keep pushing that direction. Right, Thanks. Thanks, all. Thanks, Fear. <laughs> Thanks, Fear. Well, if I may, Galathir, I, I think you're mistaken in your understanding that we're telling you you can't just because we're not interested in the things that you're wanting to do. I actually fully expect that there will be animesh wings because in the bento process, I personally fought for more wings in the wing bones, but in order to get a truly realistic feather wing fold, you need to have a bone for every single feather of the wing and that's just not a practical thing to add that many bones to the avatar you know but now with animesh it can be a practical thing because now you can literally double the number of bones on the avatar and put that all into really cool complicated detailed feather wings if you want to and it's really cool that we have that ability but to do that for every little part of the avatar like for instance i'm not asking genitalia, for every little part though. i'm i'm let, let me let me talk please um for instance you were saying for genitalia um to to take 159 bones and stick it down there <laughs> i'm just talking really about 159 like bones three or four. I, i'm but not talking see, about 159 every bones single, every single animesh though does add 159 bones that's what we're trying to explain to you so a lot of the users here um we we by and large tend to be more professional and have a better understanding of yeah, i tell you what i'm not interested anymore with your inferred insults you can I'm, go ahead and I'm share your opinion with whoever you want but i'm out of here you have a nice you. day i'm trying to explain so um each okay well he's gone <laughs> i tried what an idiot. Well, I was going to tell him, you could use the hind bones work pretty well with well, the Well, I bones. was going to mention that most creators have used tail and have used hind bones to get around that. Um, and that we are trying to steer the grid into a direction. Because if you let people get away with something they will get away with it and they will they will cause problems that's why you have so much lag that's why second life is so resource intensive because most of the users simply don't understand those things uh, you know they, they just they, the see only, uh, and they want pretty um the, the crazy part of you know i i feel for him okay but the crazy part of what he's saying is in the last couple years We've went from like 30 some bones to 150 to now 300 and some bones we can have on our rig. Literally in the last and, two years. Right. Never He's enough. Complaining about he doesn't have enough bones. <laughs> it's never enough. I have a quick question. Well, um, it, it's it, it's 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 not that there's not enough bones. It's that there's not bones for specific things. Uh, cause yeah, there's all those bones, but you can't be using those wing bones down there because people want to wear wings or they want to wear tails or. And that's the problem that the community is running into right now is people use, like for the wings I'm wearing, the creator put a whole bunch of the bento bones into them. So if I use anything else bento, like an extra pair of legs or exactly. a, a bento horse, I can't wear two bento attachments basically. Um, and yep. that's where it's going to run into animesh also. It's, okay, you'll have one bento attachment and one animesh attachment. Yeah. yeah. I am have more than one bento attachment, though. But no, because everybody's using all the extra bento bones for all of their attachments. 
then like that is a design general. that is that is a design choice that the creators will have to to deal with and they will have to inform their customers of yeah I, it's, it's it's a problem the customers end up having uh, yeah i was gonna sure. say I, I have a quick question um maybe i'm i'm misunderstanding this isn't it true that as long as two animesh are modifiable you can link them together and as long as they're not using the same bones you can just attach them to one attachment point yes. right. so the thing is it's not going to say for example i'm wearing uh anti mesh hair right now if i want to wear something else that's anti mesh it's going to have to stick to the same attachment point so if i wanted an anti mesh tail for example to wear along with this hair i couldn't do that yeah you could yeah. if they're using the you same bones right but if they're using different set bone sets, they can both be worn, I thought. You can wear both of them, and it's you link them together if they're using separate sets of bones. Because they're they're not they're linked See, together as one animesh part, but they're not set to a specific attachment point on your avatar. So you can move them around. See, that's the trick, is getting every trying to get everyone to agree that these bones are going to be used for these things and these bones are going to be used for those things and not everyone's going to agree. Yeah, that's it's that's it's true. got to pick and choose what you want and I envision cuz knowing the community most people are going to want to go with an animesh hair and they're going to want to have an animesh pet and then a third option so 3 should be the max limit ever. Releasing with one is a good idea to get a baseline of how this is going to affect the community. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Yeah. That, yeah. that 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 I, one I, is probably not enough. Um, and yeah. but well, in the initial well, release, I, I can I, see releasing with with a single one, and then upping it to two or three once they see if it's going to have a, a big impact or not. Well, here's what I'll say though. I'll say okay, there are things that because I had a creator or not a creator, someone that came to me, they wanted a horse. Okay, and they were adamant that I make this horse and make it with the bento and, uh, you know, uh, the human rider and then using the rest of the bones to do uh, the rest of the horse. And I told, I flat out refused because I told her Animesh is coming and why the f*** would we do all that when I can just make an Animesh? And that's <laughs> the purpose of Animesh is to ride a f***ing horse. Okay, right. so, uh, creators can do all kinds of stuff. You could do whatever the hell you want, but there are ways, you know, certain things are made for certain things. Yes, we can <laughs> attach them, we can wear them, we can whatever. I can't wait to see what people do with it all. But, I mean, this debate about one, two attachments and all this, I mean, come on. We have all kinds of shit we can do. You know? <laughs> well, it, look at it from the end user point of view. Is some most people they'll find a hair that they like, and they're ooh, this animesh hair is animated. It looks really good. I'm gonna wear this. But then they go to a gotcha fair, and they see a a gotcha for pets, a pet panda that follows them around. They go to try to pet, attach their pet panda, and they can't because it's animesh and it tells them to remove their hair. The end user is really going to be put off if they're restricted to just one. That is from an end user point of view. Well, I would say that, you know, what needs to happen in the market, and I think it's, we're coming to a head because Bento's been out long enough now, that, you know, creators going to have to spell out the bones or, or the lab needs to either list the bones you're using or something like that. Yeah. See, that's the problem is the end user doesn't know what bones are used for what objects. And there's no way to know that these bones, well, actually, I think there is somewhere in the metadata that you can actually see bone profiles and stuff. But most end users don't know that, don't care. They want to buy this cool looking widget and use it. And it's us as the creators to figure out, okay, do we need to standardize that bone 100 or bone 1 through bone 25 is used for pet animations, bone 26 through 51 is used for limb attachment animations, stuff like that. Um, 
Well, the good thing is, like, something like Animesh unloads all of those pets that were being made with Bento, you know? So it unloads <laughs> all of that. So now you have less confusion in those areas, less confusion in the horse market. And except know, for those know. old products aren't going to go away. There's, there's going to be more confusion because there's going to be more options. I know a few of the creators like i believe the water horse she's actually going to update her horses her bento horses to animesh i believe if i saw the post correctly some of them are just updating so that'll be easier to deal with but it's still um you get your animesh horse and you want to buy get something else you have have to use bento or animesh and it's really going to be exciting and hilarious at the same time seeing what end users do because i was thinking they were talking about lagging with multiple attachments i'm thinking okay somebody's going to create a script to be able to activate different animations on different parts of the animesh so you can have multiple skeletons running and going to create lag and that'll cause problems but it's We've got to see where the, what the initial release well, is I think do. that's why, I mean, I, what you just said points out the reason why we only, we're only allowing one. You know? Yeah, that's because we got to see what it does, what the community is going to do with it, what some Einstein of a scripter is going to say, oh, I can do this. Like the stepped animated meshes, I never thought of that. Whoever thought of that was freaking wow. But the lag it causes. One thing I do think... Oh, go ahead, Matthew. Uh, no, 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 go ahead. One thing I do think they really need to look at, though, is the LSL support for Bakes on Mesh. Because... Yeah. Take take a um, a applier for um, makeup. A, a, a makeup HUD can have up to sixty different makeup combinations and eyes and lips. And are you really going to say, okay, here user have this folder of sixty different applied layers that you get a click through one at a time instead of just using your HUD? Well, you know, he, I, when people make arguments for HUDs, I, I kind of go nuts because I see how people make HUDs, okay? <laughs> and uh, so I would want to get away from, like, any kind of HUD thing into something that the lab supply, you know? Well, if the lab is willing to supply something, that would be great. I, I know I would love to be able to make an overlay that actually looks like it goes with the viewer as opposed to these HUDs, but that's just not an option at the moment. Like I, I would love if on these like little tool things that we can put on the sidebars, if I could make a HUD that pops up when you click on a tool thing. That would be great. It's nice and unobtrusive. and can be moved wherever the user wants it to be. Are you talking about, like, maybe um, add-ons for, say, your viewer, an add-on to where you could, on mar the viewer marketplace, add a HUD as an add-on instead of um, buying it in-world? That's one way to do it. Um... Another would be just to have some sort of LSL command that when you first wear the HUD, it, it, it pops a button onto your toolbars and then disappears from the screen until you, like, select your little button and then it pops back up into view. That way it's actually a part of your screen, like, instead of just kind of floating there, like it doesn't actually belong. Well, I guess it's still floating there, but it's like, you, you've noticed all of the HUD makers have started making things shrink down and try to make them less obtrusive. 
but it's still it's still really annoying because no one can agree on what should go where. It's like some body makers put their huds on the left hand side, some body makers put them on the right hand side, which is a mess because the head makers do the same thing. And so depending on what combination of things you wear, you might have your body and your head huds overlapping and there's nothing you can do to like move them because of the way they do the rotations. It, it would look really weird. I keep most yeah. of my heads off screen and just bring them on screen when I need them. Yeah, see, right. yeah, that's, that's something people do, but they shouldn't really need to. If we could make them a tool button, like all the other tool buttons we have, uh, it, it would integrate much more nicely and customer intuitively. So, yeah, and, and also... Also, uh, the scripts don't need to run when they're off screen. So, you know, besides uh, the script impacts of HUDs and, and all that, uh, really, Scri the scripts biggest... don't run when they're in their inventory. So, you, they don't need to run. If they add what I'm suggesting, they don't need to run when they're not visible. Well, the, the other part about HUDs is, you know, analyze just about any HUD out there um, and you will see something that is occupying, you know, gigabytes of texture space uh, because of all the, every box, every button is a new texture. I, I don't know about gigabytes, but yeah, there's some pretty bad HUDs out there. I, I've, I've had to talk to a few people. <laughs> so, so. I mean, I'm yeah, on the author... I, 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 Letting uh, people I've, be creative, but we, I mean, come on. Yeah, when I, you're I, 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 I throwing your whole but, experience. But, you know? but, but that, Our dragon are extensive and really, really bad. So I know what yeah, you mean by but, bad huds. But yeah, that, that's something that can be fixed with just like a tutorial video on how to make a, a HUD that doesn't suck. But, <laughs> um, then you'll just get people saying, oh, well, I don't like you telling me what to do. Yeah, well, then they are, their HUDs can continue to suck. Uh, well, it's like what I was thinking is Firestorm has the animation override that they released years ago. What if they had yeah. a um, something like that, but you could throw your texture HUDs into? So it's you had a button for texture override or whatever. Um, that could be and interesting. Just, and it just worked for the system flood layers. Well, oh, I, I, don't, I don't know. I don't know how useful that would be for system layers, just because of how much clothing people have. I mean, lots. Yeah, but like uh, a mesh head HUD or a um, body HUD. Those are the sorts of things that you kind of want to be easy access and get to. But like, what color your jeans are? That that you might wear a different pair of jeans every day. I don't know if you need all of those on your bars. No, no but no, because the um, baked on mesh. We're just talking about avatar layers. Baked on mesh at this point doesn't cover your jeans and your your hair. And I mean, people are probably doing some interesting uses for the it, it, for the it hair your and jeans. for the. Well, uh, I'm talking about if it's texture avatar layers clothing here. layer. Yeah. I'm, yeah. But, uh, that's the same thing. When you're talking about clothing and hair, the, those are things that a lot of people they change those out daily. Um, they're not wearing. It's not like a mesh body or a mesh head that you're wearing all the time, and that you want to tweak the settings on that constantly. Uh, though I guess if, if Bakes on Mesh does catch on and everyone goes full Bakes on Mesh, the avatars won't really have these huge HUDs for alphas any, in uh, layer selection anymore anyways. Mm -mm. That's why they need but, to add the LSL support for Bakes on Mesh. Yeah, that, that, that that's true too. Because... 
honestly, a lot of mesh makers are saying they're they're going to go full bakes on mesh, whether or not there's LSL for it or not. And some are just full on uh, will not go bakes on mesh without it. Like they want to see the LSL. They need the alphas to work. They need the materials to work. They need all of it to work before they'll even think about switching. So. Uh, that, that's my big concern is if we don't get the LSL, not everyone's going to, to switch. And we're going to be hitting this huge market of uh, haves and haves nots. And it's going to become a big, forgive my language, clusterfuck for anyone trying to shop for their mesh because they're not going to know oh, what's going it, to work for them. <laughs> it was the same thing when mesh bodies came out because there was a huge clusterfuck because people had their old appliers for all their clothes and everything. Yep. And, and it gets worked out. It's bakes on mesh is a good. I thing. know because I'm the one who had to work that out. <laughs> so, uh, that, that that's why Omega pliers like now happen. And at least at least now it's it's either pliers or there's not pliers. But uh, which is pretty simple. It's if you got mesh, you use pliers. If you don't have mesh, you don't use pliers. But now with the bakes on mesh, if we're not able to keep using the appliers on some versions of the mesh, there's now going to be a whole lot more uh, fine. Uh, what's the word? When I, what I actually see probably happening initially, is the body makers and the head makers will release a bakes on mesh body, with maybe one or two extra layers that can be used with appliers. Instead of the multiple, multiple onions as it is, it'll be a reduced onion. So it'll be... Some of them are bar. saying that, but again, not all of them are saying the same thing. That's, that's ultimately the problem, is that they're not all going in the same direction. And the so thing is that the ones that are going to do that are going to be the ones that survive. The ones that refuse to update will die out. That's the way yeah. it goes. Well, I, I don't know about the refuse to update because honestly, you can already get bakes on mesh onto a mesh whether or not they do anything at all thanks to pliers. Uh, oh, the yeah. only hiccup, the only hiccup is that uh, because most of the meshes set their skins to alpha mode none, uh, if they're not mod, then alphas aren't going to work. You'll just see a big blank area. Um, but then they have alpha cuts in there already, so that's not a huge deal. Oh, I hate um, alpha cuts on my mesh body. I would oh, lose a jig. everyone does, which is why we're all super excited for Bakes on Mesh, and we want it to work. But mm -hmm. I don't think it's going to unless they add the LSL. <laughs> oh, it'll work. It'll just be... Not it, everyone... It doesn't work unless everyone ado adopts it. So. Well, it's it's you get the um, it'll work perfectly. It's just you'll get the people that say, "Oh, I don't want to spend the time to make clothing layers out of my pants." Um, and it's there's mm -hmm. some people that still release clothing layers with their mesh pants. Well, it's it's clothing layers with. Applier. Well, yeah, appliers. You, you, there's people you don't, that already do it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But a lot of people, people that they they, they still support that old non-mesh market. Um, and that, it's that number it and, 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 until this 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 um, announcement of bakes on mesh, that number was shrinking, um, just because appliers are so much more convenient to make than clothing layers. Even even bad applier systems are better than making that, system layers that's that's going to be the problem is the 250 plus cloth it's the makeup is where i see the huge problem with it all right pants pants you may have 10 colors um shirts you may have 10 colors but makeup oh god's women in their makeup you could get a million in a hud it's just it's yeah that's where i see oh, the big make, problem. makeup i actually see working better just because uh, the face on is is tricky with mesh because you can't have masking layers on a face. 
nothing you could possibly want to apply to your face looks good with masking mode. And you can't have overlapping layers of blending mode without it glitching. And that's why you, at first they all just kind of try to cut out one layer and like uh, have sections around the eye, the cheeks, the lips, which worked better than nothing, but still it's it's not great. Now they've we figured out how to make overlapping layers work if they're all part, part of the same prim. Uh, but honestly, I think we can go back to being able... To... I'm sorry, I'm taking way too long to explain this. <laughs> Matthew, do you remember how many layers they've added to the to the bacon vest just for the head? Didn't they add a lot more layers? Uh, I, you know what? Uh, I think Kathy is really the expert on the whole uh, bakes on mesh thing. I've been so busy with the animesh and everything and Sansa. Uh, I've been oh, yeah, touched. Yeah. That's why yeah. I have to concede to all of you. Really, I mean. I can only think conceptually about it, really. Yeah, but, but yeah really, we, got, I think we didn't fakes... actually get any more for the head. Um, we got three auxiliary fakes channels or whatever, but they can be used anywhere. I mean, and they yeah, don't mask yeah. out any part of the, the default system avatar. So they oh, could the, be the, used the... for just about anything. And yeah. they separated well, the, thing the right with the... and left arm finally, didn't they? Uh, no, not from the system avatar, but no, that's what they were envisioning that these new auxiliaries would be used for, would be for uh, the left and right arm and left and right foot. Um, I thought they, they also did, I thought they also hand. added, I thought they also added left and right foot in addition to the auxiliaries. I think that's what they were calling them, but they, there's, there's, like anything, you can use the auxiliaries anywhere you really want to. So if you wanted to, no, to use no. an auxiliary for breasts, you could use them for mesh breasts that replace the system avatar breasts um, if you really wanted to. No, I, I mean, I, I think I, I saw them add tech, like textures both for left foot, right foot, and for auxiliary, like... Might be texture slots for, yeah, there's texture slots for left and right, I, I believe. But those texture slots are just placeholders, and you can do, like I said, you can, you can set a mesh to whatever you want, whatever... <sighs> So, so if you took, if you made mesh breasts and you set them to the left foot uh, to use the texture on the new universal um, tattoo to use that texture, um, it, it would, you know, it would use that texture from that texture slot off the universal. Um, I, I, I know they're still looking, I'm hoping they're still looking into my idea that I had for being able to set different channels for the for the auxiliary um, uh, bakes uh, channels. Yeah, yeah that... I think that's going to happen in the first round. <laughs> yeah, I don't think that's going to happen in the first round either. Um, although it'd be nice just because we could totally hijack that to get materials working. Um... Right, because then you could set any texture you want to any channel, and it wouldn't. Well, mm -hmm. within you know within one in a million or whatever, and the chances of any two. Meshes using the same channel for that same particular texture oh, would be oh, pretty nice. Yeah. And it'd, be, it'd be pretty easy for someone to come out with a chart. Like, we're going to use channel 1 for uh, upper materials. We're going to use channel 2 for upper normal maps and blah, blah, blah. And all the way down the line. So. Right, right, right. Yeah, some, you know, sort of like um, the, the five standard sizes sort of developed after a while. Um, uh, if, if, if a common usage... Uh, thing to give it, let people, yeah, between 300,000 and 52 and 3,050 something is for penises. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, whatever, it's, you know, whatever you want. I, I don't it, think we it, need more than one channel for, well, maybe two you know, for any particular thing, unless someone's going to wear more than one. But, uh... Oh, that's just, no. No, we, we can drop the... <laughs> uh, hey, people in SL are weird. Let them be weird. That's how we all make money. I guarantee you. Um, yeah. I had a mic there. Really, 
<laughs> what I what I'm really excited to see is they're bringing back legacy names. Yay! Yeah, that's, I wish I had known they were going to do that. I have an alt that has the exact name I would want for my business account. <laughs> I don't know. I just wish I knew how they were going to do it. Is it going to be like the old days where you get a list to choose from? Or? Yeah, that's what I said. It's going to be a list. That's You'll be able to pick your first name and list list of last names. I went the other direction. I had a last name, and then they released usernames without last names. And I'm like, ooh, want me one of them. <laughs> <laughs> See, I'm the youngster here. I, I don't have one of them. Everybody else does. I think it, it just signifies that you're old. <laughs> If you have a last name, you're old. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's pretty true. True. Well, we know you're old, Matthew. 